So genetic modification is something that upsets very many people. And I think one of the problems with genetic modification and the, the public discourse over, over genetic modification is that many things have become conflated together. And if one looks at the implications of adopting GM, there are environmental reasons, there are environmental consequences one needs to study, there are health consequences one needs to study, and there are also economic consequences. And in particular, one of the economic consequences is that GM by its nature is intellectual property that can be patented and can be owned by one or a limited number of players. And I think some of the problems with the public discourse is that, to me, quite legitimate arguments about who owns the technology have got tied up with, again, legitimate arguments about environmental effects and, and health effects. And I think it would be helpful if there was greater clarity about what people were discussing. If one looks ahead at what may happen with GM, there are some interesting initiatives at the moment to produce GM crops that will essentially only benefit the very poorest people in, for example, the Sahel region of Africa. So, for example, varieties of cassava and millet and sorghum that are nutritionally better than those that exist at the moment. And I think that it's going to be interesting how the public discourse evolves when one is considering a crop that is GM, but which no one will make a profit out of. And I think we'll see interesting arguments about the environmental and health benefits and disbenefits, which are completely, completely real and important things to discuss, but also arguments about whether this is a sort of, uh, I've heard the expression, tr uh, Trojan crop, whether it's a crop that is pro bono that then leads the way to a wider acceptance of of GM.